Uh, today I will be presenting for you a proof on the computational complexity of Nintendo's popular game, Pokemon. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, this presentation is going to be broken down into two sections. First, I'm going to introduce uh, what is a complexity class, uh, how do we define problems based on their, on their complexity, and then the second half I'm going to present a, lay out the steps to present a proof of Pokemon's complexity. Hold on. This, is, this zoom is weird on here. There we go. OK, so uh, what are complexity classes? Complexity classes are basically a way of grouping problems together. Uh, they can be grouped by their time complexity or their space complexity. Uh, for the problem of Pokemon, we're going to be talking about its time complexity specifically. Uh, the complexity classes we're going to deal with are P, NP, NP complete, and NP hard. Uh, some other popular complexity classes include CoNP, P space, NP space, uh, EXP space, EXP time. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about uh, P versus NP, and what is P and what is NP. So a decision problem is a member of the class NP if given a certificate of that problem or, or a solution to the problem, we can verify that that certificate is accurate in polynomial time. And when I say polynomial time, that means polynomial time based on the size of the problem. So if we were to have like a graph with n nodes, we would be able to verify the certificate for some problem uh, in polynomial time of n. A uh, decision problem is a member of the class P if there's a known algorithm which solves the problem in polynomial time. So it's clear that the class P is a subset of NP uh, in some way, because if you can solve the problem in polynomial time, clearly you can verify if a solution is correct. Uh, and it's strongly believed that P is uh, what's called a proper subset of NP, meaning that P is not equal to P, but uh, there's actually no proof of this uh, currently. So it could turn out that someone could maybe someday prove this, and that would be a pretty crazy result if that were to occur. Uh, this is a possible diagram of what P and NP might look like, and NPC, which is NP complete. Uh, this would be if P is not equal to NP. So now we can talk about NP hard and NP complete. So a decision problem is classified as NP hard if every problem in NP can be reduced to it in polynomial time. So what does it mean to reduce a problem? So we say that A less than or equal to subscript B, subscript PB, or problem A is reducible to problem B if all instances of problem A can be transformed into some instance of problem B in polynomial time. So for example, uh, in case that was very abstract and, and weird, uh, the dot product of two vectors is basically an instance of simple matrix multiplication. So if you had some way of solving matrix multiplication, you could use that to solve the dot product of two vectors. Uh, v1 dot v2 is m1 times m2 where m1 is v1 and m2 is v2 transposed, turned on its side, and they're the same length. So why is this important? Like I stated, if, uh, if a is reducible to b in polynomial time, that means if we had an algorithm that solved b fast, we would be able to solve a fast. So in essence, b is no easier than a, and a is no harder than b. So a decision problem can be classified as NP-complete if it, if it is in both NP and NP-hard. Uh, another stipulation for NP-hard is if there exists some NP-complete problem which reduces to it. And that's how we're going to set up this proof for Pokemon. So these are two possible diagrams of what P, NP, NP-complete, and NP-hard may look like depending on if P were or were not equal to NP. 
So I've been mentioning decision problems uh, throughout those past slides. So what is a decision problem exactly? Uh, a decision problem is a problem where the solutions are yes or no, one or zero. Many of the problems we might see from day to day would actually fall into the category of optimization problems, which is, for, an, for example, if we have a graph G with a bunch of nodes, what is the shortest path from node A to node B? Uh, but it turns out that all of these optimization problems have a decision problem that uh, is essentially, that is equivalent to it. So we can transform uh, decision problem, optimization problems into decision problems by instantiating a bound. So the decision problem of the above example basically states, given an instance of some graph G, is there a path between two nodes A and B less than some length M where M is our bound? So today, for this proof, I'm going to, we're going to be investigating Given a Pokemon game state G, is it possible to get from point A to point B? And there's a few things that are going to be worth noting with this Pokemon game state. But I'm going to go ahead and state this proposition, which says, the decision problem of whether a target destination is reachable in a generalized Pokemon is NP complete. So what do I mean by a generalized Pokemon? Well, if, for those of you who have played Pokemon, there's clearly a lot, of, there's a lot of elements that are in the world that aren't necessarily key to the game, like obstacles and reasons that you may not be able to get from one place to another because you haven't progressed far enough in the game yet. For generalized Pokemon, we are going to consider the only obstacles to be enemy trainers. So this game is, can you get from point A to point B some given game state that has enemy trainers scattered throughout? Is there a path? that you can solve. So there's two steps that go into proving this. Uh, first, we have to prove that this problem is in NP. And then we're going to have to prove that is NP hard. So since uh, all Pokemon only have four moves, uh, and they have limited power points, and you can have at most six Pokemon, and an enemy trainer can have at most six Pokemon, uh, we can bound any individual battle with another trainer by constant time. Enemy trainers can only be battled at most one time, and then they become inactive. Therefore, if we have a game state with n, n enemy trainers, uh, and we were given a cons uh, certificate consisting of a path through that game state, uh, we would easily be able to check that path in, po in polynomial time of n, the number of trainers, because each trainer's battle is constant time. So therefore, Pokemon is in NP. So the next step in this proof is to set up a reduction from a known NP-complete problem. So the NP-complete problem that we're going to be dealing with is uh, called 3 CNF set. But before we talk about that, we're going to have to restrict or generalize the gameplay uh, in some ways, which is basically instantiating some specific instance. So we're going to classify two types of trainers. We're going to have strong trainers, which if you walk up to a strong trainer or you walk into the line of sight of a strong trainer, you will lose in a single turn. And we're going to have weak trainers. If you walk up to a weak trainer, you will, lose in a, you will win in a single turn without losing any HP or power points. Uh, if anyone is interested in how exactly that is set up, I have a link at the end of this with like the specifics. Okay, so yeah, like I said, we're going to be reducing from three CNF sat or three conjunctive normal form satisfiability. So what is three CNF sat? Three CNF sat is the decision problem of whether a Boolean formula in conjunctive normal form consisting of three literals or variables per clause is satisfiable. So I'm sure that cleared that up for a lot of you. <laughs> uh, basically, this is what a three CNF sat problem looks like. We have clauses with three variables connected by ors. So x1 or x2 or not x3. And then each of those clauses is connected by an and. So we could have any number of those uh, in a 3CNF satisfiability problem. So for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to tell you guys that this is definitely MP complete. And you'll have to take my word for that. 
Okay, so this is the groundwork for our reduction from 3CNF set. This is basically, this is what's going to be our roadmap. What we're going to have to do in order to solve this proof is we're going to have to build variable gadgets, build, build clause gadgets, and talk about ways of connecting them. So that can be, that's represented on the screen by, by those different boxes. So, and we have to be able to construct this state in polynomial time. And another thing to note is that we have to be sure that when you go down a path, that path is final. So if you choose to assign x to true, there's no way to later go down the not x path. We have to be sure to, to ch account for that. And just so you guys are aware, in the next few slides, uh, trainers with a red line of sight are considered weak trainers, and blue line of sight are the strong trainers. Okay, so this is our variable gadget. We have one trainer on the screen, an easy trainer. We can, it doesn't matter which necessarily, which path of the two on the right hand side we assign to true or false, just that one is true and one is false. One is x and one is not x. So if we were to walk down to the bottom right corner of the screen, the trainer would walk down and battle us, which would open the top uh, door in that, in that gadget. If we were to walk up to the right, and talk to the trainer from his left-hand side, it would open up the gadget on the right-hand side. So the next step is to find a way to express a clause in a Pokemon game state. So we need to be able to express three variables uh, connected by OR statements. It needs to be laid out so that when we assign a value to a literal, like in the previous variable gadget, uh, it cannot be altered and we need to take care to prevent leakage. So this is what our clause gadget is going to look like. Um, the paths above those three trainers in the, so the three trainers with the red line of sight are, con are considered like our variables. And the paths above them are paths that lead directly to our literal gadgets. So um, the path below then is unlocked if, uh, if one path from above is able to stop one of those trainers uh, where they are. So for example, this, we could say that this room models the clause not x1 or x2 or x3. And say we assigned x1 to false. We chose the not x1 path. We would enter the room on the top left uh, path, we would walk down and we would battle the trainer uh, that's on the leftmost side, and then he would be frozen there, which would block the strong trainer on the far right of the screen from reaching us when we eventually walk across the bottom of that path. So now with those in place, we can start to really visualize maybe how this would be laid out in a map uh, we can say that these, these paths here are the paths from the variable rooms into the clause rooms. So if we choose X, we could go into this clause and we could unlock this trainer that was on the leftmost side here. And then we would walk back and we could walk to the other room, which is connected to X. And we could unlock this trainer and then walk back and then walk across to our Y room. Basically, what we're doing in all this is we are setting up one specific instance of Pokemon which can model any type of problem of 3CNF set. So if we had some algorithm that solved Pokemon, we could put a, we, we could solve 3CNF set using that, using that algorithm. So there's a few caveats to, to this layout uh, which are worth, worth mentioning, but those, the variable and the clause are the main points of interest in this proof. Uh, first is, if you notice in that diagram, paths are going to cross. Uh, and for example, if we are walking back here after choosing x, this path crosses with this not x path. 
So we want to be able to make sure that we can't cross down into the not x path and open up this clause down here and this clause down here using our not x. So that's accomplished with uh, a crossover gadget, which is very large and complicated. I'm not really going to walk through the whole thing. But the point is that it prevents you from walking down a path that you're not supposed to. And the crossover gadgets use one-way tracks. And one-way tracks are used in a few other places throughout the design, which say once you cross through a path, you cannot backtrack and go back. So this is what the one-way path looks like. As you walk from point A across the screen, the strong trainer on the bottom's view is blocked by that weak trainer. And then as you walk down into the weak trainer's line of sight, he's moved. And then you cannot cross back into the line of, the strong, line of sight of the strong trainers. And this is what the crossover gadget looks like. <laughs> so basically now we have proven that the trainer Pokemon problem is both NP and NP hard. Therefore, it is NP complete. <laughs> so it's a pretty crazy result, because what this means is that uh, there's actually some way to reduce Pokemon into 3C and FSAT. How to do that, I don't know. It's probably a very, it would probably be a very crazy proof, but it does exist because of the nature of NP-complete problems. Any NP-complete problem can be reduced to any other NP-complete problem. Now, Pokemon can most likely not be reduced to a problem which runs in polynomial time, for example, sorting array. But if you somehow manage to do that, you should probably go to the Clay Mathematics Institute, and there's a million dollar prize waiting for you, because you would have solved p equals mp if you managed to do that. Yeah? Do you still get the million to prove that p does not equal 1p? Yeah, yeah. If you solve the problem at all, you get the million. Uh, so yeah, so if one mp complete problem were discovered to be solvable in polynomial time, all mp complete problems would be solvable in polynomial time, which would lead to some possible ethical dilemmas. Namely, a lot of security systems rely on these NP-complete problems being difficult to solve. So if the wrong person were to solve P equal to NP, they could probably gain a lot more than a million dollars through some shady business. And another interesting fun fact, Pokemon Yellow is actually Turing complete. <laughs> you can actually, it, it's, yeah, I have a link to it. So, <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, on here, there's a link to the more in-depth proof of Pokemon's NP completeness. And uh, also included on there is uh, the proof of Donkey Kong, Mario, and Zelda's NP completeness. And uh, there's a Minesweeper NP completeness proof, if anyone's interested. Pokemon Yellow being Turing complete. And the Clay Mathematics Institute prize problems, if anyone's feeling ambitious. <laughs> Thank you, guys.